It's Datsun time. You excited? I'm excited. Now we got some equipment here. We got the Dixie Co 396 whatever. I have never actually used this thing. Does it work? We're about to find out. We got some degreaser. It's going to be coming handy later. Also, carb cleaner. Important stuff in a moment as I describe the things. We got a regular toolbox here. Assortment of fuel bits. We got our screwdrivers. We got sockets. We another kit in there. We got it all. We've arrived. We got the good stuff. What a nifty little thing. And she is an 83 Datsun. Oh, it's even got the cool aftermarket bumper. Now, I have never seen one of these where the graphics were this intact on it. And yet, I know there's holes. That That's normal. I know there are holes. Or, actually, that looks like it was cut off purposefully to clear a tire. Whew, living our best life here. That brings me back to the topic that I was going to make. The graphics intact here. Because any Dawson, any truck of this era, is going to be just beat up. They were not treated kindly. So the Japanese vehicle this time was sort of, people called it the soulless Japanese appliance. And ironically, I think of the American boat cars about the same way, just no personality in the thing. But for this, they were cheap and people bought them to use them. People bought them and never maintained them. It's definitely running some giant tires here. Yes, truly the best life. Yes, I would have it no other way. If you're not having second questions when you sit down on the thing, did you really get a gem? Did ya? Integrated cup holder. Or natural cup holder. <laughs> oh man, back window shot out. This this really is a gem. This is get a good drink. Yeah, it's a little uh little testy sitting in here. A little dirty. But this is legitimately cool. Nissan was the way to go back then. I mean, Toyotas were, were fun and cool and whatever. Oh, they all had this classic shift. Hold on. Do we got the four or the five? One, two, three, four. Whoa, they splurged. We got the five speed. Like, look at this. Look how many ripums you get. Built in tack? Yes. 5,500. 5,500 is nothing. But back then, Tree Fitty was done about 45, four grand is with the inline sixes of the day. So overhead cams, these high rev enjoyness. We got some aftermarket in there. Aftermarket steering wheel. Yes, yes, so much yes. But these were acquired to be used. What? We're in four high? What? Uh oh. Okay. Ah, broken glass. Yeah, a little gross. A little gross. Has one of them catalytic converter deals. This brings me way back. Back when I was a kid, my dad, probably the ideal customer for these things, bought himself an 83 Mazda. It has the smell, it has the patina. I think it was surprisingly less rusty. Also, it was 30 years ago. But a 1984 Mazda B2000, which was the cheapest truck you could get, and that was their slogan for 4995 Sakes Alive. You get a five speed, you get velour plush carpet, and you get UV tinted windows. Those are options on other vehicles. She's uh, meant to be used. Nissan Datsun. Pedometer stuck at 55. Good old double nickels. I am told this thing starts but revs sky high at idle. It's just out of control. And looking here, we got some stuff going on. Well, how cool is this? Nissan Z motor, it's gonna be the Z24, 2.4 liter overhead cam, single overhead cam. Now this was something back into the early 80s. What was America doing with cars? What innovation was there? I mean, for small cars, for four cylinders, that's, you know, S10 and Ranger are both both import inspired and, and brought on. In fact, the Zuzu Pup and the earlier Courier were literally imports. So what what were you getting? I mean, even going into the 80s, the big thing was the K car. And you get a reverse flow head, nothing great about it. I mean, looking back at this, like, how did we, how did people get all excited about that? Why was that the seller is legitimately cool. We got 
fancy tech in here. Of course, carbureted version. It's the Z24. America did have single, did have overhead cam vehicles in that. You know, earlier, I think they tried with a Pontiac or something. They tried, um, tried in a Corvette. You can get a Vega, a Vega, fun stuff like that. But for this, this is actually somewhat modern. So weird stuff going on here. The double system, I don't understand. You have to learn something about that real quick. But don't understand, which doesn't mean it's not understandable. I mean, there are different spots in the distributor, so it's different time. Did it sparking on the exhaust stroke? Maybe. Complex. Yeah, I'm more familiar with the Toyotas and Mazdas of these eras, and they are a fun thing in their own. At a Weber 32. And we have a hastily installed Weber. <laughs> so, ooh your start economy what what 13 9 of 13 really <laughs> all right all right you are gonna start by looking for giant vacuum leak vacuum which is probably what we got going on here if I had to wager, that is the uh, EGR. So it's taking hot air there, exhaust gas recirculation. There's some complexities in there. You got weird vacuum actuated thing there. Uh, a choke that's not hooked up. Let's start the thing and see what happens. <laughs> Actually smells terrible. So of course, switch for the fuel pump. That's a bit high. I cannot believe that actually cranked. But I can see the idle screw is all the way in. Let's pull that out and see what happens. We'll just go all the way out. We seem so high that we can just run her all the way out. I am editing this thing, as you can see. And yes, not idle screw, idle mixture. And what I'm attempting to do here is to make the mixture so bad that it actually idles a little bit less, less than four grand on the thing. The idea is riching it out, and so it stumbles down to two twenty five hundred, something that's manageable. Because I have in my mind that I am searching for a large intake or vacuum leak, and to do four grand, it would have to be a really big one. And of course, ah. it's been a while since I've worked on these Webers. Well, that's about all the way out. Let's see if that made any appreciable difference at all. New tricks this I mean, time. There is no. I mean, that's all disconnected. Cold idle disconnected. That's off. I'm gonna close the choke. If we're getting unmetered air in there, hopefully that brings the idle down enough that I can get in the thing and start searching for where that is. And to do that, we're gonna do the old trick of carbon choke cleaner. Listen for changes. Should idle down if we get to where it's actually leaking in. Let's see if that makes the difference we want it to. The tag is convenient. It actually does. I'm probably flooding her now. Guaranteed I'm flooding it. Anyway, definitely flooded it. Look at that going for me. I flooded her so bad that those gaskets look wet, which is probably part of the problem here. I'm gonna try to start it again. Try to back her up. We're gonna move spots here. Um, right over here is somebody's house. It is early in the morning. They're probably not fans of this. And I'm gonna see if I can tolerate the, the RPMs. If I can, what I might do is just let her run at those high speeds and see if I can pinpoint that where that leak is. Cause I'd almost guarantee this is an intake leak. <laughs> Oh man, uh, how do we get out of the thing? Okay. That's how. 
That is schmokity. <laughs> well, all these intake bolts are barely hand tight. Why don't we start with that, maybe? <laughs> Jeez. Click. And I know if you follow the channel, you've seen these complaints before. This is a Crescent Focus 13, and she is junk. Look at that right there. It is not accurate at all. So we can get her on here. 13 or one half. Yeah, not even. There's no way we're that lucky. But we'll we'll try her and we'll find out. Now, the overwhelming feeling I get from this is what I believed was happening is a guy had another one of these. And I'm told by the guy who got this that the owner before then had another one of these in much nicer condition. But he picked this up for some parts. And he got those parts. And then... You know, it probably ran when we got it, but as you can see, this thing is pretty uh, rough. Looking all down the thing. Pretty rough. So, he got this thing, got whatever parts he needed, and then it came time to dispose of it, and rather than scrap it. If you're a good car guy like me, or I don't even call myself a good car guy, but a car guy who is into these things, you have a hard time scrapping this stuff. Now, this might be... It runs, it drives, there's probably a lot of good parts in the things. That's the logic I would use, and I would have I would have a hard time. I have a hard time taking anything for scrap. All right, well, we know she burns oil. Does she have oil? Oil exists? Uh, barely. I may need to get some of that. Well, the price of a vehicle that will at least start and move on its own power is significantly greater than one that doesn't. So we slapped a Weber on there, probably did a few things so it at least started. All right, speaking of starting, let's see where we're at. Same thing. Damn it. Probably handy if I tell you what we're doing here. We're gonna remove the carb and take her apart. In fact, done. This small of a hole, these weak ankles, this is bull <sighs> Again. And it's the same leg. Ugh. Maybe the float was just stuck and I fixed it. I can't believe this. Tiny. And these gaskets, uh, I believe, are still good. And we are getting into every <laughs> This has been every Weber installation I've ever done. <laughs> is Why is it like this? I might just pull that carb completely off. We got the right adapter plate at least. So with the amount of fuel we're pumping down there, it's... You saw that, and you saw it just pour right out of the thing. I'm feeling there's a fuel issue here. Now, these were made to work on a return line, and I'm trying to study this and figure out what's up with this. Look, they both go into one here. There's a send and a return. Which one's which, I don't know. But, made to go into a return line. Now, I'm operating on a hunch here. Now, there is effectively a return line, I guess. It's not through the carb like it would typically be, but these Webers require a fuel pressure regulator because they cannot handle more than three pounds. Three pounds of pressure. Now, theoretically, if that is the fuel pump I think it is, which is the Holly, Mr. Gasket, whatever, general, cheap $50 unit, it's only capable of three and a half pounds. We already know the thing is overfueling, possibly vacuum leaking. So, for the uninitiated, certainly not you, this is the float controls the level of fuel inside the bowl. The bowl being this area right here. And in here, we have a, ooh, ooh, yeah. All right, so it comes up over the top. That is your primary. So my thought process is correct. I'm gonna turn on this fuel pump and fuel is gonna go everywhere. And yes, fuel is going everywhere. We're gonna test our theory here. We're gonna fill the bowl and see if she runs without the fuel pump. I manually fill it to the appropriate level. And since looking down in the bowl, how I don't see a line, a fuel level line, usually there'd be some gunk or debris above that line, tells me that this thing is overfueling. It's filling up and it's just spilling over. We're gonna fill it manually. We're gonna put it back together. We're gonna start it and see if it runs at a more reasonable level. It seems pretty simple. We could need a new seat. Now that pump should be 3.5. I'd love to have a fuel gauge or a pressure gauge here to see, but I don't. That, it could just need a fuel. Honestly, if it needs a new needle seat, we just get a whole rebuild kit entirely and go from there. We're gonna see if this makes any difference here. I'd love to have a pressure gauge, but alas, do not. Let me get you right in there, see some fine needle operation there. 
There we are. Oh, it's coming right at us. Choke open. Fuel bowl level set. I'm trying to. I'm gonna move the camera over there. You should see the exhaust. This thing's gonna burn blue. She's. Oh yeah, she's burning good. But this fuel return business, all things equal, it should make no difference if it's going through here and actually flowing through the top of the carb. The needle should hold back the pressure and then it should flow back. So that equilibrium, it, it should work. It just seems different, <laughs> different. We'll go with that. So kind of want to get, I mean, there is a, effectively a return, and normally the return would be on that side. You'd have a little dingus in there. There'd be a return coming off the other side, going back to the tank. This does it right there. Interesting design. Like I said, I haven't seen that before, and I'm not extremely well-versed in these Nissans, these Dots. Well, Dotsons I am. Nissans, it's, in a, it's a new animal for me. Let's see how good my diagnosing is. Uh-oh. Oh, what happened there? Or, oh man, the fuel pump's required for everything. <sighs> all right, well, all right. I mean, that's it. Now maybe we can get an accurate thing on here. Right there. No vacuum leaks. That is not what I expected. My fuel's dripping a little bit, but. No difference. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Well, that's an exhaust, but I really thought it'd be that guy right there, but nothing. At the very least, we'll get a clean motor out of this thing. We'll see if we can at least get it drivable and tell it whatever needs to be done can be done. I might be the world's biggest idiot. Throttle opens, closes, opens, closes. The spring is weak. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah. Might just be. Let me just put it over. Oh, man. Or it's missing a spring. Should be one right there as well. Well, at the very least, you guys get the incrustacies of these carbs and these 32s, whatever. <laughs> Jeez. All right. That'll screw back that off a little bit. When it was fully at idle, she was a little rough, and then she eventually stalled. So, we're going to turn it all back on again here. Now that we have a proper throttle return spring, man, that was dumb. <laughs> Stronger spring. That idle good. We're a little low on oil. Ah, we are not charging. Impressive. Oh, she's a clackety clackety clackety. And what is that? Well, we got no power steering fluid. So who knows what's going awry there? We also are a little low on oil for my saw. Clackety clackety. So we're gonna get some oil. We're gonna go and buy a few more springs, actually. A few springs and see if we can get this idle to stay down. 
I can't believe that. I can't, I can't believe that. So we got, I repositioned the spring. It's now coming there and pulling from the backside. I'll get another to pull down from here, down to there. We'll see how she's doing. Ah, the usual suspects. Chosen for a very specific reason. It's the closest parts store. Ah, filming for the YouTubes is a different experience. You hold your phone this way, but holding it this way, people don't know if you're just texting or if you're whatever, but if you're holding it the right way. So if you hold your phone properly, it's obvious that you're filming and that gets awkward. The house brand is that expensive? Jeez. Oh, well, we're doing a 1040. You can already tell she burns. Now, power steering fluid. And you can advertise for people for the low, low price of uh, $11.99. And then we look, where is it? The help section where we would have these little springs. Ooh, ooh, and uh, no. So, looking at here, if they got the right one, 3.5. Now granted that's not an Edelbrock, but I think these are all made in the same spot. These Edelbrock ones, which are more expensive, have a little thing over it. Although that one does not have the dingus end where you screw in the filter. Filter, oh, hey. Ooh. See if we got a cheaper spring help section. Oh, there are those filters right there. So it does not have the screw-in filter like those ones, but it looks like a plastic thingy around it. So if I was near my house, I'd probably have a spring lying around. You can get the door menu. They do have the help section. Why'd you look at that? I'm getting an extra spring here. $9.49, an extra assortment. And I'm assuming there's a zero. Why do we always sell ourselves short here? There ought to be the Weber 32 and 38, very popular. Why is it not in stock? They should just have these on the shelf over here, honestly. But why is it not? You gotta go online to get her. Only $5.99, I should've just went to Walmart, but they wouldn't have had the springs. I mean, super tech in this thing, it's just gonna burn it anyway. I don't know how many quarts you're low, but you're only getting one. It's certainly more than I had before. And. Oh man. Let us go. I am in two wheel. <laughs> oh, that drivetrain is so loose. I can hear it click. Mistakes. Yes. Steering wheel's not even straight. This is a bouncy ride. I'm gonna have to feather the throttle to keep her running. Oh geez. Okay, we got brakes. We got brakes. No turn signals. Is this a BMW? I've got no plates. I've got no insurance. But I do have a Datsun. This is the Datsun experience. And as you can see, she's an absolute speed demon. There is some alignment concerns. But this is so cool and so fun. I absolutely love it. We're almost ready for fourth gear. <laughs> Temp good? I can't see any of the gauges through this thing. And I can't close the window so you guys can hear me. Steering. Questionable. Suspension. Questionable. But cool? Yes! Uh, I think the Subaru behind me is getting not so happy about this cloud of smoke. I know I've said it before, but I love everything about this thing. Everything! Look at how cool that is! Ah. Let me give you the full experience here, the crotch experience. I love these Nissan shifters. I either have a quarter or no, no fuel. You do have to feather it, so you gotta get... Ah, oh, this steering wheel is not the right unit. Because without intervention, yeah. Now if you let off nicely. Eh. These actions could be dangerous and could cause you issues. I'm gonna show you one thing here. I thought it, well I smell it, but I don't see it. I thought for sure it smoked me for that. And no oil pressure. I'm just gonna assume that that's not hooked up at all. But look at this, what an experience. I mean, 
as if it matters. Only 171,000, almost 172. Does not appear to overheat. That tag is super cool. It has a built-in diagnostics equipment right there. This makes me happy. I don't know how or why, but she still got her cat. So still throttle return spring issues. That's me holding the fuel. But if I hold it up a little bit and then let her off slow, should see if we can get that dialed in. I think we're going to pull some mixture out of her. Let's see here. There we go. There we go. All right, all right. Maybe a little bit more because she's finicky key on me. That's probably good. Now, ideally, you would not put your throttle return spring on your thing there, but whatever. Good enough for the girls I go out with. That's still... I think I need to cut that fuel hose and do a little repair there. That's where we're at. Beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. Now, listen to it. Purr like a kitten. Yes. I do love everything about this. This is a gem. We've made good progress. So I unnecessarily took the carb completely apart, took it off, took it apart, and I suppose you gotta look at those things. As simple as the throttle return spring. Now, I am somewhat familiar with these Weber 32s. I've transplanted a number of them. So I, I should have known. But there was already this one spring here, which is not the throttle return spring. So now we've got a few throttle return springs, two to pull her back, because yeah, the thing's a little crusty. There is no choke as we got there so we adjusted that we fixed this i mean we chased some uh rabbits down a hole on some things for fuel pressure and stuff but those were not the issues let's just give you an overview of the rest of this truck super cool independent front suspension and that was for 83 that was a new tech in the domestics you were not getting that you're still getting the solid front axles i think in late 80s when they went to the when they went away from the old body style to the gm 81 whatever platform that they i think that's when they went independent but let's just look around the thing we and options here we get power steering which do, works occasionally and that is a unusual feeling because you'll be steering and you'll be putting in the effort for it not to work and then it suddenly will work for a moment and then you're bam <laughs> whichever so honestly for the guy that owns this which is not me unfortunately i would just get rid of that belt of course we need all new headlights let's take a look under the th there is that independent front suspension i was telling you about and for 83 or the late 70s when these started coming out that was modern all right, people are going to be all up to me on me on this front suspension business, independent front suspension. Ford had the twin traction beam, whatever, and I guess it supposedly is independence or whatever because it got those scissors. It's got long arms down here, but the angles are all messed up. Have you ever seen one of those old Fords, like a Bronco, for, you know, 80s Bronco or anything, jump, get some air? You can see that extreme camber because there's no way around that. So, looking under the thing. What are our gear ratios here? I'd bet they're pretty handsome. I mean, we don't got a whole lot of power to deal with. Of course, we've got a leaking front main seal. Missing bolts. Somebody's been in this thing before. Looking at the thing. We got... All right, where's this power steering coming into play here? All right, there's the steering box there. Direct steering box. And the lines go right to the steering box. So, yeah, I just pull her off here. Whoa. Nearly a solid mount. Now, on these, it is kind of hard if you start looking at these because the welding that was done on these, you can see right here, and it is a fully boxed frame all the way back. However, it is two C channels welded together, as you can see here, because there is a nice lip right there. But the difference between factory welding, I imagine that's before automatic factory welding. Earlier, my dad's 83 Mazda on that and pulling off the bed later on and doing some work on it the welding that was on it and the, how not accurate things were uh, this time mazda was sort of the chrysler of japan in the early 80s now nissan has taken over that title in my opinion mazda's gone more upscale good for them We've got the big ultima energy here that's for sure look at all that leaking power steering leaking look at all the room and the welds although stick welding not not the prettiest I mean, that, that's good. You got some good penetration there. Some of these are better than others. Like, look at that, where it's not perfect. 
So, some are better than others. Um, but that's functional welding rather than the weird fancy welding that everybody tries to go through, the welding porn or whatever. But look at all this space we got here. Whew, speaking of camber issues, uh, I imagine this was a set of tires that was just tossed on. It's hard to say if that's an issue with this thing or if there's something else going on. So, we of course have the torsion bar suspension. It is the twisting of the bar. Now, everyone used this, you know, Ford used this, so did Chevy as well. A single catalytic converter back there, which honestly needs to go. Now, I do hope the guy that has this loves on this truck a whole lot. Look at that itty bitty transmission, itty bitty five speed. They didn't need a whole lot to hold back all the hundred ponies that this thing is putting out. Of course, generally interested on the gear ratio here. Looking up online, a 411 seem to be what they all come back to, and I guess it's a C200 rear end. I've never heard of that. But, 83, 1757. Now our alternator, uh, covered in grease, which is not charging, of course. And is that a, is that the oil pump? Yeah, these newer Nissan stuff, but Datsun definitely. This is all modern. Of course, we still have the straight steering box that will kill you. They kill you, I mean it. So in a front end collision, should this all collapse, which it might, it is a solid shaft. There is this joint here, so there is some bending possibility, but that steering shaft, unless there is a thing probably in the cab, but this is where they would usually put it, a slip sleeve, of which do not believe that is it. There would be some slack to go in and out which we do not have. Straight shaft. The steering column crushes your chest, basically, in a crash. Ooh, and I did clean that up nicely here. Look at this motor. Let's look at the rest of this thing. There is electric. I can tell this has been written hard and sort of just pieced together as it is. Uh, the wipers do not work. In fact, the blower works, surprisingly. Um, that's it. Hole right there instead of an antenna, which tells me that this did not come with a factory radio. What a time. No need to bolt your seats down. The jump seat. What unlucky kid gets to sit there? Automatic hubs. Not everything had that. A lot of people get rid of them. Ooh, definitely does need some fuel. Well, let's look at the back here. Now this bumper is super cool. I love the style that they did. The My Nissan aficionados. That can't be factory, can it? No way. Oh, cute little nifty little drive shaft. Now, a cool thing, another cool thing, here's that fully boxed frame I was telling you about that's welded all the way down, which is a lot of welding, as you might suppose. Let's see this axle here. We bit of play in our drive shaft. That's actually not too bad. I was feeling more play, so maybe there's more play coming up that way. Still has the cat. That is unusual. Well, this one's not mine, but if it was, <laughs> I wouldn't be there no more. With the pumpkin that comes out, this is a, uh, wrong, a semi-floating axle, which means in a conventional half-ton, the axle shafts are actually held in by C-clips. The C-clips are right there holding it in. However, in these, if you want to do those four bolts right there, you can pull the whole assembly out because the it actually floats on it. But the differential assembly comes out this way, so you need to pull out the shafts, and the axle actually floats on it. It's not actually held in in the case. So the axle's right here. If, if you pull that out, the axle will actually drop. Or once you undo those bolts, it will drop. So, a different thing. Supposedly 411's back there. So, nice drum brakes in the back, fronts. Of course, there's wires dangling all about here. And looks like standard 20-gallon gas tank, whatever. Now, different philosophies as well drain plugs on the gas tanks that is serviceability right there there's a lot more to ah, there's glass uh, broken glass from this truck there's a lot more to do with this rig it's not mine i was just helping a guy that i know get her going here and so i think we have succeeded in that mission she is in fact going running drivable occasionally stalls hopefully that doesn't stall too much anymore but we are solid. This is cool and I am happy. I'm gonna start it one more time. One last time here. Does the neutral safety switch work? A slight miss. 
that probably yeah there we go but that sounds good actually strong oh they all tick like that what a time to be alive for both of us literally this concludes this thing if this is your thing you know what to do oh fine dotson I'm gonna miss you, but I think you're off to good things. It's not over yet.